Beetle. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash Ganglin comes... The friend of the unfortunate. Enemy of criminals. A mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police. A crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor. Flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of The Blue Beetle is entitled Sabotage and Liquidation. Will the Blue Beetle prove smart enough to checkmate the clever and ruthless band of international saboteurs who are planning to sabotage Uncle Sam's new fighting plane? As our story opens today, Dan Garrett, who is also the mysterious Blue Beetle, is discovered entering the little apothecary shop run by his friend, Dr. Franz. He seems to be in a hurry. Doc! Doc, are you alone? Hello, hello, Dan. Why, what's the rush? Yes, yes, I'm alone. Good. Will you do me a favor and look over my blue beetle armor and see if it's okay? Why, certainly, my boy. You might get that mysterious ray machine you invented for me the once over. Is the blue beetle going to do a little nipping again? Well, I don't know yet. But I'm assigned to the flying field police detail, and you never can tell what'll turn up. Well, I'll have everything ready for you whenever you get back. Thanks, Doc. So long. Have you noticed, Danny, me boy, that the chief gives us the best special assignments? You're right, Manigan. You know why? Maybe he likes the way we wear the uniforms. No, that ain't it. The commissioner likes you, Danny, and he's given the chief orders to give me and you the good assignments so you'll have the advantage of my superior wisdom and experience in handling ticklish situations. Oh, so that's it. Sure. Like, for instance, this one today, out here at the flying field. They're testing out one of the new fighting planes for the United States Army. Yes, I know. They say it'll outfly and outfight any flying ship in the world. Well, now, suppose some of them foreign agents, or maybe the Blue Beetle was to sabo uh, sab sabotage. Uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Suppose they was to do that, and that plane up there was disabled and crashed. Well, it would be up to us to make an investigation on the spot and keep the crowd back and look for clues and inter uh, inter inter interrogate Manigan. Yes, uh, interrogate witnesses and mechanics and people. And what about it? Well, I, being more experienced than you, I, I know how to take charge and... Well, it looks like you'll have the chance to do your stuff, Manigan. That plane is in trouble. Yeah, that's right. Hey, look. Look, his motor's tearing loose. His wings are breaking in two. He's trying to do a bottom leap. He'll never make it. Hey, hey, where are you going, Dad? That plane is going to crash. I'm going to save that pilot if I can. Hey, wait, you can't do nothing. He'll be killed instantly. He's got a pass. He's got a pass. Hey, look, look out. Hey, 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 hey,
And that evening, he called upon his friend and confident Doc Franz, the chemist, who had a little apothecary shop in one of the city's side streets. Look at these boats, Doc. I got them from the wreckage of that new pursuit plane. Hmm. They've been tampered with, all right. So on halfway through. Uh, let's put them under the microscope. What? What do you find, Doc? Very interesting. Very interesting. And what is it, Doc? Uh, they've been sawed halfway through with a mayor hacksaw. A mayor hacksaw? Uh, yes. The invention of a man named Mayer. They're made of a special type of steel and saw teeth uh, set differently uh, from ordinary hacksaws. Therefore, they have a very distinctive mark on everything they cut. Also, the blade of the saw is so thin that it is sometimes difficult to locate the cut they make. They're usually called hat mayors for short. Only one airplane company in this country uses them so far. That's so who? Uh, the Darrell Airplane Company. Then this must be an inside job. Yes, Stanley, yes. It looks like it. They had the contract to make several experimental planes of different types. This pursuit plane was one, and the super bomber, which is to be tested tomorrow, was another. Okay, Doc, and thanks. I've got to change into my other costume. This is a job for the Blue Beetle. Uh, you take some terrible risks, Danny. I worry about you. Don't I worry about you. Don't worry about me, Doc. That secret 2X formula you gave me at the hospital certainly pet me up. Oh, that was nothing, Danny boy. Nothing. That impenetrable blue steel chain armor you made for me has saved my life many times. Yes, but someday something may go wrong and you'll be killed. Why don't you give up this Blue Beetle character and stick to regular police work? You're popular with the commissioner. Someday you might be chief of police. Doc, I've dedicated my life to helping the underdog and cracking down criminals and bringing them to justice. And no matter how great or how powerful they may be, I've got to do it in my own way. I must work alone. And you're the only one who knows who the Blue Beetle really is. I value your confidence, my boy. You're doing a grand job. Thank you, Doc. I better get going. I've got a lot of work ahead of me tonight. How do I look? Very mysterious and very terrifying. Uh, how does the magic ray work? It's well, let's... How's that? Mm -hmm. Air raising to a guilty conscience, I've heard. <laughs> yeah. You know, that sound and the little blue beetles I dropped in front of those I wish to impress. <laughs> Certainly knocked the ground out from under their feet. Uh, have you got your flashlight with the blue beetle on the lens? Yes, right here. See? Mm, that shows a powerful beam. I'll need it tonight. Uh, whom are you visiting tonight? I'm visiting the experimental construction department of the Darrell Airplane Company. I want to look over that super bomber. I want to make sure it doesn't crash tomorrow. Uh, be careful, Danny. Be careful. Don't worry, Doc. I will. But I think the blue beetle will do a little nipping before this night's over. Beneath the wings of the giant bomber in the experimental construction department of the Darrell Airplane Company, a shadowy, sinister figure moves, guided only by the light of a small pocket flash. Slowly, he climbs the scaffolding directly under one of the powerful motors. In his hand, he holds a hack saw. In a holster at his waist, protrudes the butt of a 45 Colt revolver. Silently, he mounts to his goal. <laughs> that pursuit job was intense today. Tomorrow, this bomber will crash. This sure is an easy way to make... The Blue Beetle! Oh, yeah? Well, take that, Mr. Blue Beetle! Oh. Uh, got him. The Blue Beetle's not so invulnerable after all. Lucky I was healed or he'd have got me. I better beat it and tell Captain X-13 somebody's wise to us. Let the other workmen find the Blue Beetle's body here in the morning. Out into the night ran the treacherous workman, the saboteur who had caused the wreck of one of the newest planes intended for Uncle Sam. In a fast motor car, he speeds away to report to the mysterious X-13 the discovery of their secret. As he reaches his destination, he comes to a stop before an iron gate. A silent figure slips forward and bars his way. That too, Slug? That's right. This is Butch. Let me through. I gotta see Captain X-13. It's important news. 
But if we could do, you know the captain. He'll get a kick out of the news I got for him. Yeah? Yeah. I plugged the Blue Beetle. The Blue Beetle? Where? At the ship. He caught me at work and I let him have it. <laughs> Gee, that'll make the captain happy. Well, good luck. You. you fired at that flashlight that I wasn't behind. Well, uh, you won't get away with it a second time. I'm going to... Uh... Let that be a lesson to you, Butch. Never lead with your right. There's dynamite in my left. Now I'll just tie you up for safekeeping, and then I go to Captain X-13. <laughs> okay, Mr. Blue Beetle. That's what you get for mixing in things that aren't any of your business. Hey, Butch, are you all right? Oh... What hit me? It's Blue Beetle here. I sneaked up and sucked him when he started to tie you up. Come on, give me a lift. We'll carry him into the house and let Captain X-13 decide what to do with him. That is the so very famous blue beetle you have there, huh? Eh? Yes, sir. He caught me working on the bomber. I threw a couple of forty-five slugs at him, but I must have missed. When I got out of the car, he jumped me. He must have been in the back seat all the time. The rat there copped him a beaner when he was starting to tie me up. He must be liquidated. My seaplane that is in the river. Put him aboard. We take him out to headquarters ship at daybreak and execute him. Then we come back here and finish the job. All right. Bring the thing in here. You better let me go. My father will make it hot for you. Who is this woman? Jane Barrel Chief. I caught her snooping outside. Oh, so you are the daughter of Sidney Darrell of the aircraft factory? Yes, and you better not harm me. He'll get the whole United States government after you if you don't let me go. I am not a fool, young lady. To release you would be suicide for me. I choose not to die until my work is done. You will stay here. I won't stay here. My yell and scream till everybody can... Take her away. Find that gay girl and quit her with the other one. What are you going to do with me? Take you for the ride in my seaplane out to the headquarters ship. In the morning, you will play the feminine lead opposite his uh, blue beetle in a double liquidation. At daybreak, Captain X-13 and his crew of nefarious saboteurs and conspirators, with their two prisoners bound and gagged, take off down the river in their seaplane and head toward the sea.